Welcome back to Lumberjack Stadium for a huge matchup tonight between the Arizona State Sun Devils. And you look at their lineup here, of course, headlined by Nicole Douglas, the phenom freshman leading this team in points this year. And then look at Graham Winkworth. He's really uh, turning around this program, or he wants to. He's in his second year here. Uh, and taking a look at NAU's starting lineup, of course, this one's headlined by another freshman, Sam Larberg, number 19. She leads the team in goals. And Andre Luciano, in his 18th year as head coach for NAU, he'll look to get a huge win. NAU, 1-10, and 10, all time versus ASU. So no doubt, CC, this would be an enormous win. Look at the series history here. ASU, of course, leads this series 10 to 1. Last meeting was August 14th. It was an exhibition match, though. So, you know, anytime a school like ASU comes up to Lumberjack Stadium, you, you can see the crowd here. It's it's absolutely packed. Oh, yeah, and it makes it really exciting. I mean, you already have a big school from down south coming up. They're part of the Pac-12. So for NAU, this is a huge game, a lot of excitement going on, and should be a fun game tonight. A couple of things to get out of the way. Now, ASU has a wider field. CeCe, you were talking to me about this before the game. What's this going to do? You know, NAU might have the advantage as far as the field conditions go tonight. Yeah, they definitely will. I mean, you know, when you're used to playing on a wider field for ASU, when you come to this narrow field, it seems a little bit more congested. So you have to play a little bit quicker. You don't have the space to get through balls in and stuff like that. So it's going to be difficult for ASU at first to adjust. And the crowd tonight, CeCe, I, I, I'm not sure I've ever seen <laughs> Lumberjack Stadium this pack we still have people walking in right now yeah it's amazing to see like I said when you get you know a bigger school like ASU up here it really brings out the crowd and it makes it really fun for a player to play in front of someone like this I see some of the basketball squad walking in right now yeah that's the great thing about NAU is seeing all the support that you get from the other programs here and you know that's what I loved about this school was each program supported each other actually uh, Andre Luciano tweeted out a couple of days ago he said Last time a U of A was here, we set a record for attendance. He said, uh, let's see if we can get a record tonight. We'll have to count it up when the match is over. But, you know, there's potential for a record tonight. Uh, the other thing that we were talking about, CC, NAU's field is crowned a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Where it peaks in the middle. And that could do something for through balls that ASU isn't used to. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when you have that natural crowning of the field, it makes it to where on the outside it's sloped a little bit downhill. So if you're playing the ball on the field um, and on the ground, you know it's going to be a little bit faster paced. And that's a thing that teams coming in here have a lot of time difficulty with in trying to control the ball. Just seconds away from kickoff, there you see Sam Larberg, star freshman. Yeah, Very she's doing amazing. You know, I, I talked to Andre Luciano before the season started. I said, you know, do you have any freshmen? Uh, and here you see. Nicole Douglas, who's an absolute freshman phenom. I talked to Luciano, and he said, it's, it's not very often that I'm going to start a freshman. They just have to get used to school and playing. But Sam Larberg making the start tonight in a huge matchup for NAU. Nicole Douglas will tip this one off. She just passes it back. ASU playing four defenders back. Pass over to number 14, Eva Van Dersen. She'll pass it back. How do you expect NAU to attack ASU tonight, CC? Well, honestly, I'd like to see NAU just kind of go full throttle at the mouth in the beginning, you know, get ASU back on their heels. They're not used to the field conditions here. Ooh. Larberg with the shot. <laughs> <laughs> or, sorry, uh, that was looking for the number here. ASU had the shot. They got off to a quick start. That looks like number 11 right there. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, with a team like ASU and the caliber they play at, you really have to go at them tough and get them on their heels. I mean, they're going to take their chances, and they're going to have really good opportunities. So if you don't get at them right away and get some good shots on, you're going to be in big trouble for the rest of the half. So one of the things that I think Andre Luciano wanted to avoid was hitting the ball out of bounds. I think, you know, Cordero caught up with him at practice this week and he told Cordero we want to kind of kind of want to keep the ball in bounds right yeah I mean you want to maintain possession as much as possible and when you kick it out you know if you get a little frustrated or you know or a little nervous back there and you just kick it right out of the way then you're giving the team a free throw in there and free possession so it'd be more important for us to maintain possession and try to move the ball up forward Cordero as ASU lines up for the corner kick what did Andre Luciano say about that 
Matt in practice. Coach Luciano mentioned that he counted 12 or 13 times in their last match where they just turned towards out of bounds and kicked the ball. He also says, you know, instead of turning out, let's turn in and focus on keeping the ball in play. Sam Warburg clears this possession. It's a nice clear by NAU. Dangerous corner kick by ASU, and they'll just pass it back to their goalkeeper, Nikki Ponis. Yeah, ASU is doing a great job so far in maintaining possession of the game and getting the ball forward and putting in some good opportunities already in these first, like, three minutes. And that's one of the things that head coach Graham Winksworth in his second year here at ASU, that's one of the things he, he really wants to do with this team. He wants to play possession soccer. Yeah, I mean, it's key to have possession. If you have the ball most of the time and are able to, you know, get the other team moving around, it kind of tires them out a little bit faster because they're chasing the ball down, and then it gives you good opportunities to slip in behind and get a really good chance on goal. What is Andre Luciano's take on that? Is he a possession guy? Oh, he's definitely a possession guy. I, I heard him, He, you know, when I talked to him before the season, he said, this is the time we have to get our conditioning up because, you know, to keep possession of the ball, it's a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. And if we're conditioned, that's what we can do. Taryn Benham, she'll take a free kick here as she lines it up. Number one for Northern Arizona. She's started all seven games, three shutouts on the year, 17 saves. She's got a 70% save percentage out of Omaha, Nebraska. She clears the ball. NAU looking to get something going here with 41 minutes left in the first half of ASU versus NAU here at Lumberjack Stadium. And Arizona State's just going to kick the ball back to their goalkeeper. Nikki Panas. Heather Donis putting the pressure on. ASU moving the ball well here. Yeah, they're doing a great job. Just a lot of one, two touch passes and, you know, opening up for each other, checking in, running behind each other, giving each other space. It's good soccer so far. ASU calling oh, nice for an move. inadvertent handball. Good defense there. It's great defense by any there. That Same was, with the player. And that was Emma Robson who gets the start tonight. It's only her second start of the season. Yeah, it's good to have her back on the field, definitely help out. She's a big impact player back there, is able to get up in the air and win some balls for us. So we see NAU, they've been able to gain possession towards the middle of the field, but they haven't gotten anything working towards ASU's goal so far. That's going to be a challenge for NAU tonight. It is. I mean, ASU is a very high caliber team coming from the Pac-12, and they have a lot of good players on, the, on their team this year. So we really have to stay composed, really keep our touches to a minimum, and just try to work around them. Shot on oh, goal, nice. and it's a goal! Looking for the number there. ASU from outside the 18-yard box, and that is number 27, Marlene Schimmer. She plays forward and midfielder for Arizona State University. Started three games this year. What'd you see there, CeCe? I mean, it was just great movement on the ball there and good quick touches, and she was able to get a nice touch out around the defender and a good shot across the goal of the net. Boy, NAU now put on alert. You are not safe, even if ASU has the ball outside the 18-yard box. And here we see ASU steal the ball right away off that NAU kickoff, but Victoria Cooper gets it back. It's a good step in there. Cordero, what do you got for us down on the sideline? As we've seen from a Ooh. freshman right there for ASU, oh. ASU has a very talented freshman core of players. Nine of their 10 goals this season have come from freshman players. Back to you, Matt. Thanks so much, Cordero. Yeah, we, we talked about it pregame. It's, 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 it's the battle of the freshman phenoms tonight. And uh, we just saw Victoria Cooper. You know, we, we talked about this pregame, CC. Both these teams have defenders that are going to come up and attack. That might be a key tonight as we see NAU looking for a through ball there. But Victoria Cooper brought the ball up, and, and, and it led to a shot on goal. Yeah, I mean, she did a great job taking the space in front of her. ASU's defense was backing down, trying to stay with our forwards up top, so it left her a lot of room. And, you know, I like the look that she had there. It was a nice, solid shot. It's going to keep the goalie on their toes when she's coming through again. Amanda Bennett takes the free throw here. This is an opportunity. ASU with the inadvertent kick out of bounds. Amanda Bennett gets it back. Good defense though by ASU. They're, they're, they're swarming NAU right now. And NAU forced to kick it back. Back to Taryn Benham. Well, that's smart. I mean, keeping possession here allows us to open up the field a little bit more. Nice. Oh, this could be dangerous. Larber charged. Oh. 
Heather Donis just missed that header. All right, good fight there by number 12 for NAU, Paige Mailing. It's going to be an ASU free throw. How does NAU, CC, create scoring opportunities right now? Well, right now, we just need to get possession of the ball. I mean, that's the bottom line. You can't really score if you don't have it. So if they can just kind of calm down their play, look to find each other's feet, and then work the ball up together as a team, it'll give her a better, better opportunity to get a good shot on goal. I mean, that's one thing you're seeing ASU do a really great job already tonight is they're moving up as a unit. So if it, NAU can find a way to do that, Give us a lot better chances. It is so. It's, it does seem so frustrating when you start off a game and a team is just dominating the possession in a soccer game. How do you how do you reverse the course? How do you take over that position possession? Really, what you got to do is just play hard. You got to get in there, be the first to the ball, get a little bit more physical, knock ASU off their game. I mean, right now we kind of give them a lot of um, time on the ball, and like even if you see here, I mean, she really has no one, no one attacking her or putting pressure on her. So we just need to be a little bit faster on that and just putting pressure on them. Perfield getting some speed, taking the ball up. She's going to shoot. And that ball just misses wide of the goal post. It looked like Taryn Benham had that covered either way. But but still, I mean, that's just something that NAU can't allow. I mean, this team is a very good team. And when they get their chances, they're going to take them. And I mean, they've had a great shots on goal percentage so far this year. So. NAU really needs to step it up, get a little bit more physical, get their body in front of the ball, and put some stops to this. And Taryn Benham, so far, as we see Paige mailing. Nice through ball there. Maite Coco, but a good play there. Made by goalkeeper Nikki Panas for ASU. Taryn Benham not used to having a lot of shots on goal. I mean, I mean, one of the things that Andre Luciano will tell you, talking about his team, he feels like the defensive line is the best it's been in years. Most experienced, and they work together. And Taryn Benham, one of her strengths is she knows how to align the back line to give her the best advantage. So we see ASU taking it up again. They're going to get it out wide here. Good defense by good. NAU. That's Victoria Cooper just clearing the ball. And that was a great job there. You know, got some pressure on the girl right when she turned around. So she just really had nowhere to go, and we were able to win it back. This could be a little dangerous. Tara Benham with the clear. ASU just let this roll out of bounds, recollect. So we see NAU continues to be on their heels. You know, ASU's been been picking up speed in the midfield and, and carrying that down to the 18-yard box. Well, it's like, I mean, ASU's just playing fast right now, even on that throw, and they got the ball in, got right away, you know, keeping possession of it, moving fast. And NAU just needs to get caught up here with the speed. I'd like to see a key stop here and kind of a fast break by NAU. Uh, either just a stop and just possession. I mean, right now we're just kicking the ball up. We're not playing as a team. You know, it's just the defenders trying to kick it up to the forwards and we can't maintain possession of the ball, which won't allow us to get a good shot on goal. So NAU now, they are playing on their heels, but they're keeping it out of the 18-yard box. Mm -hmm. It's about creating opportunities from that. And, and like you said, finding a way to gain possession as Amanda Bennett fights this ball off, but the ASU attacker keeps it in bounds. Nice cross. And we're going to get Paige mailing. That was a good step in, getting in front of the ball. Really great cross there by ASU. It was really deadly. So ASU trying to work it to the outside there. They just kick it out of bounds. Lack of control on that ball. We're going to get a sub here. Heather Donis coming off the field. Number 18, Tatum Harris coming in. She's played in seven games so far, started three. This is ASU, location, Tempe, Arizona, founded in 1885. Enrollment, 71,000. Much bigger school <laughs> than NAU. Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice campus. I was there this summer. It's an awesome school. Graham Winksworth, in his second season, coaching Arizona State University. He was over at South Alabama University. He completely revamped that program before coming to ASU. 
set school records over there. Amazing. Qualified for four straight NCAA postseason appearances, four straight Sun Belt championships. Had a player or two follow him over to ASU, actually. Yeah, it'll be good to see what he does with the program this year. You know, he's starting to get a little bit more of the type of players that he wants here, so I'm sure they'll start doing pretty well. Harris chases this ball down, but it's going to roll out of bounds for NAU. Victoria Cooper looks like she'll take this free throw. Yeah, Graham, Graham Winksworth uh, started in England, came over. He, he, he was in Alabama for a number of years. As we see this ball worked up, Come on, Sam. Larbert chasing. ASU is going to smartly get it back to their goalkeeper, but AS, uh, NAU is going to keep the pressure on. What do you think about that, CC? Good pressure there initially by ASU with going, or I mean NAU going back to the ASU goalkeeper. You know, I like that three of our girls were up there right away, so we almost had a good chance. That was a smart header there by Carly Gamble to get it back to the goalkeeper. NAU now has possession. Can they keep it? CC Odifer, former NAU great, says that's what NAU needs to do to work themselves into scoring opportunities. But of course, you know, we started this game, we said, Graham Winksworth, there's a reason he revamped two programs yeah. in Alabama. He, he's a really good coach, and one of his styles of play is let's keep possession. And that's, a lot of that is smart passing, right, CeCe? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, you know, quick passes, opening up for each other, you know, making good runs off the ball is the key thing, too, with it. And that's what ASU's been doing so far tonight, and they're looking really, really good right now. ASU leads here. One nothing. 32 minutes left in the first half. Lumberjack Stadium, big matchup, non-conference game. NAU's last non-conference game uh, before they start conference play. So, you know, confidence booster, shoot themselves into conference play. Yeah, I mean, this is the last opportunity to see, you know, what players work well together, you know, before we get into conference, you know, what's going to suit us well moving forward from here on out. NAU gains possession here. Amanda Bennett passes it back to Taryn Benham. Taryn Benham will look for the correct pass here. She gets a little bit of pressure by ASU. Clears the ball. Maite Coco is going to chase this one down. Looks like it will roll out of bounds. It's a result right there of the crown field at NAU. Yeah, and that's something that NAU is going to have to be a little bit more cautious about. I mean, the more we try to play these balls forward, we're going to tire out our forwards real quick. So you're talking about the three, the through balls, mm -hmm. playing the balls forward, making them chase. Yeah, I mean, ASU is doing a great job right now defensively of getting back, you know, and this is, like I said, they're a strong program. They're a bigger program. They have yep. a lot of good players, faster players. So we just have to play a little bit more um, smart and just try to control the possession of play a little bit better. Sam Larberg there had a chance to get it to Kayla Turhune, tossed it into the ASU defense. Mm -hmm. Now ASU. Mm, so much space. A little bit of a fast break, and like you said, a lot of space. Yeah, that's not good to see, you know, someone from a defensive position <laughs> move up the field that easily with that much space and no one, no one in the midfield to challenge her. You see Paige Mailing showing a little bit of fight. You said, CC, you know, some of this just comes down to effort from, from NAU. You got to understand you're playing a really good squad. Mm -hmm. There's another through ball there, but NAU's just going to let it go. Foul against ASU on Kayla Turhune, number 10 for NAU. one nothing here, Sun Devil Stadium. Playing the Lumberjacks at Lumberjack Stadium. We have a huge crowd here. Anytime U of A or US, uh, U, of a, U of A or ASU comes to Lumberjack Stadium, draws huge crowds. And credit to NAU soccer, they average in the Big Sky Conference, they average the biggest crowds for their women's soccer game. So credit to, a to NAU. And, and part of that is Andre Luciano, who, who really uh, does a lot to market and bolster this program. Oh, yeah, he does a great job of trying to get out in the community and get people involved with things. And, I mean, in the stadium now, to what it's built to be, it's just beautiful. I mean, why wouldn't you want to come out here on a Friday night, sit under the lights, enjoy some good soccer? It is, a, it is an absolutely beautiful night out here tonight. It's, it's, you know, NAU right now, Flagstaff, it's almost that time, 40 degrees at night. But the days right now are, are absolutely beautiful as, as ASU works in the middle of the field, gets it back to Nikki Panas. 
Nikki Panas for ASU, nine saves on the year. She's got a 90% save rate, uh, save rate, but just two starts on the year. Good defense there by NAU to break that thing up. You're going to see number 22, Emma Robson, pass it back to Taryn Benham, and that's mm. a little bit dangerous. Yeah. See, that's the thing about ASU right now. I mean, they're they're high pressuring right away, and I would like to see NAU to kind of get up to their speed in that sense, you know, putting a lot of pressure on the ball, like no matter who gets it, whether it's the goalie, a midfielder, defender, just something to get ASU back on their heels a little bit. You've got to think. Andre Luciano, obviously, thinking about adjustments right now as he watches his team. You've got to think in halftime. Now, CeCe, on a soccer team, I know in football, coaches wait till halftime to make their major adjustments. Is it the same in soccer? Uh, for major adjustments, yeah. You don't want to really disrupt the flow of a game unless it's going really, really bad, <laughs> obviously. Right. But yeah, I mean, at halftime's really where you know, maybe you come out in a different formation to shake things up or you know, put different players in different areas to kind of put a bigger emphasis on either getting forward, staying back. So you'll see that sort of stuff at halftime. Good play here by Taryn Benham being aggressive, getting to that ball as ASU look for the through ball there. Victoria Cooper's one of these girls that's going to come up from the defense and go all the way up to attack. But now she left the NAU defense a little bit vulnerable. They get the ball back, though. Terry chases. ASU is wearing very, very dark jerseys tonight. Admittedly, it is hard to see their number from here. <laughs> it is a little tough to see them. That black and the maroon numbers, it's not that easy. There you see Amanda Bennett. One of the stop gaps on this defensive line. Andre Luciano loves so much. Junior from Mesa, Arizona. Went to Desert Ridge High School. We're going to see number 15, Olive Jones. For ASU take the free throw. ASU tries to cross it in. Goes behind NAU's net. And it'll be a goal kick for Taryn Benham. Taryn Benham, great goalkeeper, three shutouts. That's tied for first in Big Sky right now, so far in the year. Very competitive. She grew up with three brothers, two older, one, bro uh, one younger. She says, uh, she blames them for becoming what she says is a tomboy. Yeah. <laughs> so. I imagine you probably have to be really tough growing up in a household like that. Hey. Well, that's good though. I would imagine. It's got her here. I would imagine. It's what you want to see in your goalie, someone who's fearless. So, and she's been that so far for our program. Already having a good start to the year so far, and hopefully carries over into conference. She's an athlete too. She did cross country in high school. Letter winner in basketball and soccer. ASU works the middle of the field here. NAU still searching what's going to work on offense as ASU looks for a through ball. Ooh, my. Yikes, Victoria wow. Cooper just nicked yeah. that one. And Again, that kind of goes back to what Andre was talking about before. You know, our defender there was trying to kick the ball out of bounds. Cooper luckily <laughs> went off her foot the wrong way, but it's a little dangerous for us. But if we could have just maintained possession there, look to hold it, maybe move the ball forward, keep it in play. That's something Cordero McMurray talked to Andre Luciano about, you know, this week, and, 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 and we're seeing it here. NAU would like to keep possession rather than kicking it out of bounds. That play in particular turned dangerous very quickly. NAU switches fields here. It's going to be Nikki Panas controlling the possession. 25 minutes left in the first half of this big matchup, non-conference between ASU and NAU at Lumberjack Stadium. Huge crowd out here tonight. Beautiful night. I don't know the temperature, but it feels to me like 50. Maite Coco kept that ball in bounds, or did she? She did not. It's going to be an ASU free throw. Number 16 for ASU, Madison Wolf. Started and played in three games this year. Senior out of Chandler, Arizona. She takes the free throw. NAU, Victoria Cooper heads it. Maite Coco misses the head ball. And ASU. Good pressure there. NAU putting, like you said, putting pressure on. I mean, Some yeah, of the most pressure. Even if you can just kind of come out of the corner of their eye, and you know, if they feel like someone's coming in faster, then they're going to play a little bit quicker. You know, might not get the touch that they want on the ball, which 
No can lead to a turnover for us. A nice job by there. So what I'm Stuck hearing from you, it's, it doesn't even need to be the most effective pressure at first. Just get the pressure there. Yeah, if we can just start getting the pressure there. Right now, ASU is kind of settling in, so they're thinking they have time. So even if we can just get someone coming at, you know, the player with the ball with a little bit of speed, it can throw them off a little bit, you know, and then not such a great pass to their teammate there, and then we turn it over and get the ball back. Nice pass there by Alexia Delgado. So much space. Led to a big run by ASU here, but then AU. Carly Gamble did a nice job clearing that ball. And again, as Maite Coco kicks it up. Good job. That nice is a great job. There. Sam Larber chases, but you yeah, know little, that was the beginning of the opportunity you'd there. like to see NAU have. Yeah. Yeah, it was the beginning of it. I mean, unfortunately, Sam was kind of checking to the ball, but um, you know, we decided to kind of just keep dribbling forward, and Sam didn't really have anywhere to turn out, and there was no one up top to pass to. So, and that's a little bit of the chemistry that still needs to build within this team. Ball goes out of bounds. A little bit of a miscue there by ASU. It's going to be Northern Arizona free throw. That was be a good opportunity for NAU here to get this throwing in and hopefully get a good chance on goal. Cordero on the sideline. What do you got for us? Yeah, Matt, over here, Coach, telling the team, you know, we got to take care of the ball. ASU's doing a very great job of keeping them out of scoring range, and, you know, as we're seeing turnovers here and there, he just keeps mentioning we've got to take care of the ball. Matt? Thanks so much, Cordero. You see, I think that's Tatum Harris ran into the ASU defender there. It's going to be ASU's free kick. Nikki Pontus yeah. has her hand up. I think NAU, you know, for us, we might just be a little bit nervous out there, and I don't know if that's why we're just trying to get forward a lot, but, you know, we really do need to take care of the ball here and just kind of settle down. I mean, we have some good players on this team. They can maintain possession just as well as ASU, but we just have to settle in. Now, I would think, CC, if I was on my heels the whole game, it would make sense what Andre Luciano talked about. It, 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 if I was on my heels, it, it would be hard for me to maintain possession and, and, and stay calm and make the right pass. Yeah, I mean, if you constantly feel like you know you're going backwards, trying to you know keep ASU in front of you and not let them get behind you and get a good shot on goal, it's hard to kind of get moving forward. But that's where we just need someone kind of step up, settle the game down, you know, let everyone know like, hey, it's going to be okay. We just got to play our game. The crowd continues to pour in. Corey Brewer for the NAU basketball squad, among other players, walks in right now as NAU clears this ball. Maite Coco telling Tatum Harris, you get it. I'll be up here. And there she has it. Uh, looking for the three again. ball, but nobody's there. Yeah, and that's where, you know, we're just keep trying to push it through when we just need to slow it down, keep possession. I have a feeling Andre Luciano is going to echo what you are saying when Cordero talks to him at halftime. Uh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> He's not going to be as nice as you, though. No, maybe not. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's like you just watch ASU here. They're doing a great job as a team. Right. Maintaining possession, opening up for each other. They're doing a great job on this, even on this narrow field and really getting wide to create that space for each other. And at NAU, you know, when you watch and we get possession of the ball, we kind of just stand around right now. So we need a little bit more movement. That'll help open up space, which will help us maintain possession a little bit better. You think NAU's tired? I wouldn't say they're tired. I mean, I think it's just more possibly nerves going on, thinking that they need to play a certain way, trying to match ASU, when really they just need to get back to what they do best. You know, we don't have to get forward and get shots on goal right away. We just need to get control of the ball. This actually, NAU's going to get a sub here. Anna Rivera comes in. Maite Coco leaves the game. Victoria Cooper's got the ball in hand, getting some coaches, some coaching from Andre Luciano. Here's what you do. She passes the ball in. Sam Larberg misses the head ball. And this should be a good little substitution we got here. And is really good with maintaining possession of the ball. Has some really good foot skills, so and we'll see what she can do. Anna Rivera, when we did that first game against Arizona Christian University in August, mm -hmm. she's a spark, uh, spark plug. Yeah, she is. She has a lot of high energy and stuff. And like I said, I mean, really good footwork. I mean, granted, yeah, it was Arizona Christian that we played. It might be a little different against ASU, but... You know, it's good to have someone kind of come in and hopefully give us that jump start into this half. Ooh. And NAU had a shot there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a real shot by Paige Mailing. That was the, the first real pressure we've seen NAU get on ASU's goal. Yeah, it was a good job, you know, and she was right there on the ball, bouncing around. 
Got a foot on it. Good look. Going back to Anna Rivera. She's a freshman. One of the freshmen that's getting an opportunity from Hawaii, Castle High School, pursuing kinesiology. Now, that took a lot of guts for me to say. Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> I was actually quite impressed. <laughs> it's the, I did some research. It's the study of the body. There you go. Good job. That's about the extent that I know. Yeah. ASU with a nice through ball there. Man. It's kind of what my major was, too. Was it? Yep. We no, talked I mean, about this. What was your major again? Exercise science. Exercise science. So I guess I'm dated now at NAU. There <laughs> is, you know, I was looking at the the majors for the NAU players. Mm -hmm. Overwhelming majority biomed science majors. I don't know what that means. It means that there's possibly a lot of people looking to become doctors, really smart girls. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Victoria Cooper with the throw in. Tatum Harris passes it back. And are you getting a little bit more pressure yeah, see, in? This is good. In ASU that. zone. They're, there they're passing. Go. Look at their passing, yeah. CC. Oh, I would have liked to have seen that gone a little bit more out wide instead of right back to where we were just had it. But a lot better maintaining possession there. Lexia Del Gatto swings it out wide. Ooh, Amanda Bennett. Wow, good stop. With the defensive stop. So this is going to be huge here. We have a lot of space over here on the near side of the field. Deciding what to do Paige with it. Is really making a good run. Ooh. Oh, just a little behind her. And Amanda Bennett, I mean, credit yeah. to her. She did everything right on she that She did. Play. I mean, it's a little tough for her. You know, defender coming up, making a long run like that, trying to get a good pass on the ball. But Paige did a great job of finding the space, getting out wide a little bit. She probably could have gone a little bit wider, gave her a little bit better opportunity on the ball. But that was a good look by Annie. Great pass by Amanda Bennett. Paige. That's kind of what we needed right now. They're doing good. Yes, this is this is optimism for NAU. 17 minutes left in the first half. ASU, NAU, Lumberjack Stadium. Friday night, the students are out at Lumberjack Stadium. That's encouraging to see for Andre Luciano, who's always trying to promote his soccer program. Does it well. Paige Mailing passes it back. Amanda Bennett kicks it out of bounds. That was a highlight play. You know, when, when, when a person like me is going to do my research to call a game like this, you look at the defenders, they have no stats. No. Like, they just they have yeah, no stats. Like, oh. But that's a stat. I mean, that's a great play by yeah. Amanda Bennett. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it's tough for defenders. I mean, really, their stat is only, like, do they let the ball get in the back of the net? And, you know, NAU's done a great job with our defenders this year. They are more experienced. They've been playing together. So they kind of know when they can run up, when one's going to cover and come back. And it's been really good to see so far this year. Karen Benham just made a nice play. I, I, I like, you know, she's not afraid to come up in the box and be aggressive. Yeah, well, I think that goes back to her brothers <laughs> helping out with that. Yeah. So it's good to see. That's a good connection. I didn't even make that connection. Yeah. ASU <laughs> has a chance here, though. Oh, good stop. Oh. What do we got here? It looks like there was a foul on the play. I don't know if we're calling off. I don't know what that I want to say inadvertent handball. I didn't see it. Maybe. I don't know. It's a little interesting. ASU had Nicole Douglas, their star freshman, making a run for it. That would have been, you know, it yeah, was a, it was nice defense by NAU. We're going to see Emma Robson taking the I'm free not, kick here. Not really sure what happened there. It might have been an offsides play, but good chance for NAU. That was a nice kick there by Emma Robson, defender for NAU, and... Anna Rivera had a chance, just went off her chest into the arms of Nikki Panas for, for ASU. Nikki Panas, an extraordinarily gifted goalkeeper so far this year, 90% save percentage. That's really impressive. Started two games so far this year. So she's splitting time awesome. with Sydney Day. Well, that kind of makes sense then. <laughs> ASU has two uh, good goalkeepers. I think they feel, right now it does seem like uh, Nikki Panas has been getting a little bit more work as the season's gone on. Sydney Day has been with this program for a while. She has a 75% save percentage as well, so she's not bad herself. Yeah, those are both really good for your goalies. There we go. Good job. Good sliding play there by NAU's Carly Gamble. Yeah, and even though you know we didn't necessarily win the ball there, it's good just to kind of get down, get to the ball first. Not let them have their chances on goal. A 
ASU saves the ball from going out of bounds there. That's number 16 for ASU, Madison Wolf. Look at, ooh, and, and ASU looking towards the middle of the field here. And they had Nicole Douglas waiting for the opportunity there. ASU here gonna sub. That's number 32, Anna White. She's gonna sub in as soon as I can see the number. Looks like number 25, I believe. Nope, number 15 for ASU. It's gonna be Olive Jones. So Anna White heads into the forward position for ASU. 13 minutes left in the first half. ASU, NAU, fans continue to roll in here to Lumberjack Stadium. I heard somebody to the side of me talk about the huge number of attendants we have. Last time the U of A uh, was here, ball forward. Sam Larber oh, looks for that hard. ball. She keeps the pressure on, Nikki Panas. Last time U of A was here, NAU set an attendance record. So they're hoping they can do that again tonight, win or lose. This is always a huge opportunity for an NAU soccer squad. Anytime an, an, an NAU team can play a team in a big conference like this, Florida Volleyball came up oh. the other weekend, as we see, too smart there. looks like Tatum Harris with the foul, just a kick from behind, she tripped up ASU player right there. Yeah, this could be a good opportunity for ASU right now. We can get a close-up. That's number 16, Madison Wolf. She's shaking it off. She does not look like she's fit to take this free kick. Good ball in. That was Angela Boyle for ASU. That ball had a chance but just rolled past, and it's going to be Taryn Benham's free kick here. So with 11 minutes left, you'd like to see, and I'm sure Andre Luciano would like to see his team with at least a shot on goal. I mean, yeah, I think this is where we really need to start pushing it for an AU. ASU might be starting to get a little bit tired here towards the end of the half, so if we can really just get on them, put some pressure forward, get our whole team moving forward together. Good ball out wide here. This here will we be see a good opportunity for an AU. Tatum Harris looks for the cross. Good, that's good. Take it. Get like you said, here. Yeah. Just anything that gets the team moving up forward. I mean, I really like that ball out wide like that. It was a good job by Tatum to kind of settle it down, kind of wait for the rest of the team to come in and try to get that cross in. Cambry Meskel is going to come into the game with a scoring opportunity. Paige Mailing takes a little break here. Anna Rivera is going to be on the free, go, free throw kick. And NAU has a scoring opportunity here. Here's the cross low. Oh, oh. And that was. Not a bad. Not a bad try there. ASU with a good clear. Looks like they're going to keep this one in bounds. Taryn Benham deciding whether she should come up, and they're just she's going to get the pass. ASU keeps the pressure on. Taryn Benham got into a little bit of trouble there. Yeah. And ASU, exactly what we talked about NAU needing to do, keeping the pressure on. ASU is doing that themselves. Amanda Bennett just lost possession there. ASU's going to have the free kick, uh, free throw. Amanda Bennett with a nice defensive play. Oh, yeah. And that was, I believe, Nicole Douglas with that kick that just inches past NAU's goal line, uh, goal post. Yeah, that was a little nerve-wracking there. That's what happens when you try to clear the ball across <laughs> your own goal mouth and gave ASU a good opportunity there. That's one of the things we talked about. You know, you know, Andre Luciano wants his team to keep the ball in bounds, but you also have to know, obviously when the time is to do that, when it's not. ASU's gonna have the free uh, corner kick here. It's gonna be number 11, Jem Jenna Perfield. And it's gonna be a foul on ASU. A little too aggressive there in the box by ASU. Be a good chance for NAU to kind of reset here, get the composure back. Taryn Benham the self-proclaimed tomboy. She's pursuing dental hygiene. She likes Netflix. 
like most college students. Yeah, That's her hobby. Most people. <laughs> right. I mean, most people, right? <laughs> Carly Gamble works the ball up. Yeah. And Victoria Cooper had a chance there, decided yeah, it wasn't it's just worth it. really tough for any of you right now. I mean, we're not helping ourselves out. By that, I mean we're not really opening up for each other to give us some good passing lanes. Like, when you watch ASU and when they have possession, even on this throw in here, you're seeing girls run in, checking in, you know, helping each other out, trying to get that good passing lane right there. That was a nice look by ASU. Yeah. Yeah, they just do a lot of great movement off the ball here. ASU looking for the cross. Ooh, a little trickery here. And oh, Taryn Benno, wow. what a save. That it was huge. That is what you ASU want out of your though. goalie right there. Wow, great job. And that sparked things for NAU, but ASU not giving up. They're going to work this ball in again, and they have it in the middle of the field. Here we go. And finally, Cambry Meskill has a little bit of space to work here. It looks to see uh, if she can make the right pass. That's what we talked about, CeCe. Right <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Uh, I just, you know, when you look up and you see you only have one forward up front against, you know, their three defenders. Oh, look at the save, too. Look at the save. I don't know. Wow. She's an athlete. I mean, that's just so impressive. And a great job by our defense there and getting back and making sure to help clear the ball out. I, I would imagine, as a goalkeeper, those floating balls that are, you know, it's hard to gauge the speed. They're right above your head. Yeah, it's really tough to get that down. So she did a great job there and staying with the ball and getting both her hands up. Seven minutes left in the first half. ASU, NAU at Lumberjack Stadium. It's a big non-conference game for NAU and a chance to sharpen its tools for ASU. See, this is the thing with NAU right now. There's a huge gap between, you know, the forwards and the midfielders and midfielders and defenders at times, and that's why ASU is getting so much open space. They really need to start defending more as a team. Meskill Ooh. had a chance there. It's going to be an inadvertent yeah, handball, handball for NAU. That one off number 11, it appears, for NAU. So ASU, Nikki Panas with the free kick here. And that was number 11 for NAU, Haley Van Allen. ASU again into NAU territory, gaining control, working it into the middle of the field. That one just a little bit too far. So ASU, as we reach the end of the first half, it was supposed to be NAU getting the pressure on, and ASU's keeping the pressure on. We're going to get a couple subs for ASU. Number two heading into the game, Christina Edwards. Yeah, NAU really needs to get one final push here going into halftime. Really help morale. Amanda Bennett floats it up. Van Allen gains possession, loses possession. ASU works it down the sideline or tries to. And they'll be Good successful. The line there. Amanda Bennett, Meskill chasing. And ASU works it along their own sideline now, back into the middle. Attack the space here. Oh, that's, that's wow. too wide open for ASU, and yeah. it's a nice pass over to oh, number good. 12, Offside. and she shoots it. Ooh, we got lucky there. Offsides play. Just a hair offsides for ASU. Again, I, I mean, a lot of the problem here right now is there's just too much of a gap between NAU's midfield and their defense, which is allowing ASU's midfielders and their fours just take the space in front of them. And then it's opening up the gaps in the defense so they can get some good through balls and some good passes. That was Casey Martinez on the offsides, but NAU has a chance here. Good hustle Just there. Just can't contain okay. possession for Tatum Harris there. That's right. I like that she hustled down, you know, put some pressure, and kept the ball and put some pressure on ASU's defense right there. And now we have the ball back in for this throw in. Four minutes left. NAU desperately looking for a scoring opportunity. They've had a couple. Victoria Cooper takes the free throw, but it's just stolen away by ASU. And this ball will roll out of bounds. It's going to be NAU free throw here. 
So if you're taking a free throw from this spot, CC, what's your plan? I mean, one, I want to see a little bit better movement, not just one player moving in towards the on the throw in here and just trying to get, you know, people sucked in and then maybe get a ball in overhead behind someone's defense on that. But right now we're just too stagnant. And you could see some of the players that have subbed in for NAU, Haley Van Allen right there. Yeah. Not exactly fresh coming off the bench, still finding the rhythm of this game. Yeah, that's the, you know, the tough thing about being a sub is coming in and getting into that rhythm. But you also gotta be that spark, get things going. I would imagine if, if you're watching from the bench, you can see the flow of the game. You can't feel the flow of the game. There would be one advantage, which would be you could see what you would change if you were to go into the game. Yeah, exactly. That is one advantage and what you're seeing, like maybe where the team's lacking at and where you can pressure the other team and things like that. And ASU with a nice cross, but Amanda Bennett gets to it. And NAU able to clear this ball. Anna Rivera chases. I have to say that even though ASU is able to get inside the 18, our, our defense is doing a great job of getting down and getting in front of the ball and putting a stop on any potential shots on goal. That is, you know, in a game in which, you know, maybe NAU is, as, as we see a shot on goal here, Amazing. I think that was number 10, Casey Martinez for ASU. It was a solid shot there, and Taryn did a great job of getting down. You see Taryn Benham there yelling at her, yeah. her players. Come on. Scary back here. Um, yeah, that is, you know, in a game in which, as, as ASU takes the corner kick here, that'll be number 10, Casey Martinez. Senior forward. High arcing oh. kick, and it's going to go past everybody. A little bit too high. That'll yeah. be a free throw for NAU. That's sometimes the tough thing about coming up here into altitude, the ball carries a little differently, so it kind of works into NAU's favor there. So I would imagine you didn't come off the bench very much. No. At NAU. You're pretty good, huh? Uh, I had a very good team. People <laughs> made me look really, really good. So I was very fortunate in that sense. I think I'd be more qualified to talk about people coming off the bench, you see. <laughs> I played soccer in, in uh, you know, I think eighth grade. Eighth grade, yeah. I was an, I, <laughs> Definitely I was an effort that. guy. You know the effort guy. Oh, yeah. Those are important, though, too, you know. <laughs> no, it, it is tough, though, um, coming off the bench. I mean, you can see the flow of the game, but the tough thing is it's like, you know, now you look at it, we're almost into the final minute of the game here. You haven't really touched the ball. So might be a little bit cold coming in that, and touch might not be exactly on. Minute 05 left in the first half, ASU versus NAU. ASU's had the majority of the possession and the majority of the pressure throughout this game. NAU, of course, will try to make adjustments during halftime, and of course, we'll get Cordero's words on Andre Luciano when this half ends. Yeah, I mean, NAU's had some good glimpses. We just need to put it together a little bit more often, though. Not ASU too bad, though. With one final push oh, here, Taryn Benham. Wow. That is aggressive. I love her. She's a great goalie. <laughs> Coming is. out hard like she that. Is. Yeah, no it, fear. You know, Andre Luciano, former goalkeeper, raves about Taryn Benham. Yeah. she really. I mean, we haven't had a, a really strong goalie like that in a while. It comes out as aggressive as she does. And, you know, with her being as young as she is, I mean, it's just great to see. She has a very bright future ahead of her. And now every time she runs out, I, all I can think about is her comments <laughs> about being tough because of her brothers. Yeah, it helps. Well, we're going to come to the end of the first half here. The damage, though, was mitigated by NAU, I would say. You know, one of the things that I thought about is Luciano loves his back line. Well, if it wasn't for a strong back line, the, the damage could have been much worse, CC. Oh, for sure. NSU had some really good opportunities there, and we did a great job defensively in getting in front of the ball and stopping those shots. I wonder, Luciano is a thoughtful guy, and he knows his soccer. I would, I, I'd be interested to see, down by just a goal, what adjustments he'll make, because this is a winnable game right now for NAU. We're going to throw it right down to Cordero McMurray in just a few seconds. Andre Luciano. Cordero. 
Coach, what do you got to do offensively to get back into this game in the second half? Well, I think, first of all, we got to do a better job of hanging on to the ball. We're turning over the ball way too easily. And, uh, you know, we've got to play a little bit quicker, one and two touch. And our movement off the ball has been decent on the counterattack, but we're not hanging on to the ball long enough to get numbers forward. So I think we just have to be a little bit better in terms of hanging on to the ball and laying off uh, simple passes. I mean, we're trying to complicate things a little bit too much. And, uh, you know, we just got to capitalize opportunities in front of that. All right, Coach, we'll see you in the second half. Thanks. Sending it back to the booth, guys. Thanks so much, Cordero. Almost exactly what you said, CeCe. And Cordero McMurray will have your halftime show after the break.